Hey guys, we're in Acts chapter 6 in the Passion Translation, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessings of peace and love and happiness be upon everyone who watches these videos. And please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge that we retain today, Lord. And Lord, we just glorify you and worship you and praise you. And even when we don't understand what's going on, Lord, we trust you to help us. And that's what you like most is for us to just trust you. And Lord, you fight our battles for us so we don't have to when we trust you. Lord, when we're going through hard times, we can hide ourselves in you. You are our strength, our refuge, our defender, our shield, our protector, our guide, our hero, our champion, our love, our soulmate. Lord, you are all that is good. You're full of love and you love us so much, Lord, that you were tortured and were murdered and hung up on a cross so that we don't have to be condemned, Lord. That is love. Lord, Thank you so much, and we love you so much, Jesus. And we pray and ask for your guidance every day, and we love you. And we pray and ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, Acts chapter 6 and the Passion Translation. Okay, so we just left off, not just, but we left off with um, the apostles being brought up before the council of whoever, Sanhedrin, and they were beaten and they were happy because they... because God had considered them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. Okay, so Acts chapter six, servant leaders. All right, during those days, the number of Jesus's followers kept multiplying greatly, but a complaint was brought against those who spoke Aramaic by the Greek speaking Jews who felt their widows were being overlooked during the daily distribution of food. The 12 apostles called a meeting of all the believers and told them, it's not advantageous for us to be pulled away from the word of God to wait on tables. We want you to carefully select from among yourselves seven godly men. Make sure they are honor honorable, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and we will give them the responsibility of this crucial ministry of serving. That will enable us to give our full attention to prayer and preaching the word of God. Everyone in the church loved this idea. So they chose seven men. One of them was Stephen. It's most likely that Stephen was not a Gentile, but a Jewish believer. Okay, so one of them was Stephen, who was known as a man full of faith and, and overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Along with him, they chose Philip Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, who had converted to, to Judaism. All seven stood before the apostles who laid their hands on them and prayed for them, commissioning them to this ministry.
Okay, God's word reigned supreme and kept spreading. The number of Jesus' followers in Jerusalem quickly grew and increased by the day. Even a great number of Jewish priests became believers and were obedient to the faith. Oh, praise the Lord. Stephen, who was a man full of grace and supernatural power, performed many astonishing signs and wonders and mighty miracles among the people. This upset some men belonging to a sect who called themselves the men set free. They were Libyans, Egyptians, and Turks. They all confronted Stephen to argue with him. But the Holy Spirit gave Stephen remarkable wisdom to answer them. His words were prompted by the Holy Spirit, and they could not refute what he said. So the men set free, conspired in secret to find those who would bring false accusations against Stephen and lie about him by saying, We heard this man speak blasphemy against Moses and God. The men set free, agitated the crowd, the elders, and the religious scholars, then seized Stephen and forcefully took him before the Supreme Council. One after another, false witnesses stepped forward and accused Stephen, saying, This man never stops denigrating our temple and our Jewish law, for we have heard him teach that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy the temple and change the traditions and customs that Moses handed down to us. Every member of the Supreme Council focused his gaze on Stephen, for right in front of their eyes, while being falsely accused, his face glowed as though he had the face of an angel. Okay, I'm going to read this note. As he faced persecution and martyrdom, Stephen's face lit up with heaven's light, shining as an angelic messenger. What manifests in your life when you are opposed and falsely accused? So even after the church barely started, there was already fighting between the believers of Christ, which is what he told us not to do. Remember, he said if they're not uh, against us, they're for us. So, for 2,000 years, okay, Acts chapter 7. Stephen's sermon. The high priest asked, are these accusations true? Stephen replied, my fellow Jews and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our ancestor Abraham while he was living in Iraq and before he moved to Haran in Syria. And the present day Iraq, present day Syria. Okay, God said to him, go, leave behind your country and your relatives, begin your journey and come to the land that I will show you. So Abraham left southeastern Iraq and began his journey. He settled in Haran and stayed there until his father passed away. Then God had him move to the land of Israel with only a promise. Although God gave him no parcel of land he could call his own, not even a footprint, Yet he promised Abraham that he and his descendants would one day have it all. And even though as yet Abraham had no child, God spoke with him and gave him this promise. Your descendants will live in a foreign land with a people who will make slaves of them and oppress them for 400 years. And those were the Egyptians. But I will judge the nation that enslaves them, and your descendants will be set free to return to this land to serve and worship me. Then God entered into covenant with Abraham, which included the requirement of circumcision. So when he became the father of Isaac, he circumcised him eight days after his birth. Isaac then became the father of Jacob who was the father of our 12 patriarchs. Jacob's sons became jealous of their brother Joseph and sold him to be a slave in Egypt. 
But God's favor and blessing rested upon Joseph, and in time, God rescued him from all his oppression and granted him extraordinary favor before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh appointed him as the overseer of his nation and even of his own palace. Then, this is still Stephen talking to the, the, whoever they are, the religious leaders. Then a, a devastating famine came over all of Egypt and Canaan, Canaan, bringing great misery to the people, including our ancestors who couldn't find food. But when Jacob learned that there was food in Egypt, he sent his sons, our ancestors, on their first trip to purchase grain for their family. On their second trip to Egypt, Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers, and because of this, Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family and where he came from. Joseph sent for his father Jacob and his entire family, a total of 75 people, to come and reside in Egypt. Eventually, Jacob died there, along with all of his sons, our forefathers. Their bones were later carried back to the promised land and buried in Shechem, in the tomb Abraham had purchased for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor. The time drew near for God to fulfill the prophetic promise he had made to Abraham. Our Jewish people had increased greatly in number, multiplying many times over while in Egypt. Another king who had forgotten how Joseph had made their nation great arose to rule over Egypt. He was an abusive king who exploited our people with his smooth talk. With cruelty, he forced our ancestors to give up their little boys as he committed infantis infanticide. infanticide. Or forced them to abort their children. Infanticide. Who does that? Who kills babies like that? How could you kill a little baby like that? Like, oh my gosh. Okay. So Stephen's still telling them the story. Okay. Then Moses came on the scene, a child of divine beauty or beautiful in the eyes of God, or he was loved by God. His parents hid him from Pharaoh as long as they could to spare his life. After three months, they could conceal him no longer. So they had to abandon him to his fate. But God arranged that Pharaoh's daughter would find him, take him home, and raise him as her own son. So Moses was fully trained in the royal courts and educated in the highest wisdom Egypt had to offer until he rose, arose as a powerful prince and an eloquent orator. orator. Um, wasn't Moses like not a good public speaker? When Moses turned 40, his heart was stirred for his people, the Israelites. One day he saw one of our people being violently mistreated, so he came to his rescue, and with his own hands, Moses murdered the abusive Egyptian. Moses hoped that when the people realized how he had rescued one of their own, they would recognize him as their deliverer. How wrong he was. The next day he came upon two of our people engaged in a fist fight and he tried to break it up saying men you are brothers why would you want to hurt each other but the perpetrator pushed moses aside and said who do you think you are who appointed you to be our ruler and judge are you going to kill me like you did the egyptian yesterday shaken by this moses fled egypt and lived as an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. 
After 40 years had passed, while he was still in the, in the desert near Mount Sinai, the messenger of Yahweh appeared to him in the midst of a flaming thorn bush. Moses was astonished and stunned by what he was seeing. So he drew closer to observe this marvel. Then the Lord Yahweh spoke to him out of the flames. I am the living God, the God of your ancestors. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Trembling in God's presence and overwhelmed with awe, Moses didn't even dare look into the fire. Out of the flames, the Lord Yahweh said to him, Take the sandals off your feet, for you are standing in the realm of holiness. Or you are standing on sacred ground. I have watched and seen how my people have been mistreated in Egypt. I have heard their painful groaning, and now I have come down to set them free. So come to me, Moses, for I am sending you to Egypt to represent me. So God sent back to Egypt the man our people rejected and refused to recognize by saying, Who appointed you to be our ruler and judge? God sent this man back to be their ruler and deliverer, commissioned with the power of the messenger who appeared to him in the flaming thorn bush. This man brought the people out from their Egyptian bondage with many astonishing wonders and miracle signs. Miracles in Egypt, miracles at the Red Sea, and miracles during their 40-year journey through the wilderness. This is the same Moses who said to our ancestors, The Lord God will raise up one from among you who will be a prophet to you like I have been. Listen to everything he will say. Moses led the congregation in the wilderness and he spoke face to face with the angel who spoke with him on the top of the Mount Sinai. Along with our ancestors who received the living oracles of God that were passed down to us, but our forefathers refused to obey. They pushed him away and their hearts longed to return to Egypt. Remember, because they were mad about having to eat manna every day, only manna and being in the desert for so long. Okay. While Moses was on the mountain, our forefathers said to Aaron, Make us gods to lead us, because we don't know what has become of this Moses who brought us out of Egypt. So they made a god, an idol in the form of a bull calf. They offered sacrifices to it and celebrated with delight what their own hands had made. When God saw what they had done, he turned away from them and handed them over to the worship of the stars of heaven as recorded in the prophetic writings. People of Israel, you failed to worship me when you offered animal sacrifices for 40 years in the wilderness. Instead, you worshiped the god Moloch and you carried his tabernacle, not mine. You worshiped your star god, Repham or Durfin, or Rimfan, or Saturn, I guess is the Assyrian name. You made idols with your hands and worshiped them instead of me. So now I will cast you into exile beyond Babylon. God gave Moses the revelation of the pattern of the tabernacle of the testimony. By God's command, he made it exactly according to the specifications given to him for our ancestors in the wilderness. The next generation received possession of it. And under, is this the Ark of the Covenant? The next generation received possession of it. And under Joshua's, Joshua's leadership, they took possession of the land of the nations, which God drove out in front of them. The tabernacle was carried about until David found loving favor with God and prayed for a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built him a house. Yeah, it was the Ark of the Covenant. 
And Solomon built God a temple is what they're talking about. However, the Most High God does not live in temples made by human hands. As the prophet said, heaven is my throne room and the earth is but a footstool for my feet. How could you possibly build a house that could contain me? Says the Lord Yahweh. And where could you find a place where I could live? Don't you know that it is my hands that have built my house, not yours? Or don't you know that it is my hands who have built all these things, not yours? Why would you be so stubborn as to close your hearts and your ears to me? You are always opposing the Holy Spirit, just like your forefathers. Which prophet was not persecuted and murdered by your ancestors? Name just one. They killed them all, even the ones who prophesied long ago of the coming of the righteous one, Jesus. Now you follow in their steps and have become his betrayers and murderers. You have been given the law by the visitation of angels, but you have not obeyed it. Stephen is stoned to death. Okay, so when the council, when they heard these things that Stephen just said, all that, that story about Moses and everything, or about the Lord, I should say. Okay, so when they heard these things, they were overtaken with violent rage filling their souls, and they gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, overtaken with great faith, was full of the Holy Spirit. He fixed his gaze into the heavenly realm and saw the glory and splendor of God and Jesus who stood up at the right hand of God. Oh my gosh. Look, Stephen said, I can see the heavens opening and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God to welcome me home. Oh my gosh, that makes me want to cry. Okay, the note here says, Jesus sits at the right hand of God, but when he saw Stephen give his last breath for the gospel, he stood to welcome his martyr into his eternal reward. Okay. His accusers covered their ears with their hands and screamed at the top of their lungs to drown out his voice. Oh my gosh, these people are filled with demons. Then they pounced on him and threw him outside the city walls to stone him. His accusers, one by one, placed their outer garments at the feet of a young man named Saul of Tarsus. Okay, that is Saul, who would be converted and become Paul the Apostle. Stephen's graduation was Paul's initiation. Look, so that, look. Look how bad Paul was. Look at that. He was there at the stoning, at the murder of Stephen. Yet, he was redeemed. Okay. As they hurled stone after stone at him, Stephen prayed, Our Lord Jesus, accept my spirit in your presence. He crumpled to his knees and shouted in a loud voice, Our Lord, don't hold this sin against them. And then he died. That uh, is a good man. Okay, so yeah, so Saul was right there at the stoning of Stephen to death. And yet yeah, Saul becomes Paul and writes nearly the rest of the New Testament or is used by the Lord to write it. Okay, so even that evil guy can be redeemed. So anyone can be redeemed if he can. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus, Lord, you, <laughs> oh 
your grace and love for our redemption is just unfathomable and we don't understand and know where your love comes from, Lord. I mean, this guy Saul was murdering and torturing and persecuting the Jewish Christians. And he became a great apostle for you, Lord. There truly is no end to your mercy and love and forgiveness. You are so wonderful, Lord, and we pray that we have the strength to continue in your footsteps. That no matter what we face, Lord, our faith for you will still reign true. And Lord, because we know that our eternity with you is our victory. And... You have already won our victory, Lord, because we are yours. And we have already won because you are, uh, are ours. And we love you so much, Jesus. And we thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you for all the sacrifices you made and your people have made. And we just love you so much, Lord. And we pray and ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, God bless. I love you guys.